This college professor took his idea of a phone accessory and made it into a stable product through unique sales and marketing strategies that generated over billions of dollars in sales. This is Pop, Pop Socket. Socket. Let's go. What's up, everyone? Sean Azari here. I'm with Matt Scopak. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Deep Dive, episode 61, 61. where we dive into businesses like Pop Sockets and dive into their marketing and business strategies such that you can take these tactics and implement them into your Everybody. business. Pop Sockets started, I believe, around 2012? Yep. I think 20, around 2012. 2012. I think it was first released in 2010. Because he had a Kickstarter program. So this guy, yep. David Barnett, he was a college professor in, uh, I think, Colorado or something. Colorado, yep. And he wanted to literally, he, with his iPhone, he had a, it was an issue. He wanted his um, headphones. You know, headphones wrapped around the iPhone without getting like, oh, you know, messed up. So he went to, I don't know, a store and bought like two giant buttons and glued them together back of his phone and that solved his problem. But in the end of the day, it was, looked really yeah. ugly. And people were making fun of him. His family was making fun of him and giving him slack about how crappy and how dumb of an idea that was. So he eventually, he decided to create a prototype. I think he learned 3D CAD yes. on his own, which is like a, you could build prototypes. And I think it built about, what, 15 months? 15 months, about 60 prototypes. 60 prototypes. So this company sells or makes the back of the, actually we have it right here. We got two of them. Actually, so let's, let's pop sockets. Should we take this out? Let's yeah, we're gonna try them out. So we're here, packaging's really cool. Um, I found these at Target. So they're $9.99 for the basic version. They also have like a more, uh, more I guess, advanced designs for $16.99, then some for like $21.99. And then they have like car holders that go in the air vent. They have like a whole uh, a phone, a phone holder that's flexible, that turns. So they definitely have accessories. I well, never, I never used one before. So this is gonna be my first see, one. For those that are just listening, we're opening up the uh, opening the up pop, the pop socket pop socket i got black plane for me because you probably notice i wear black every single time and i got sean the skull the because skull. it's that a relates. badass <laughs> all right let's so, see it i guess it take the plastic off the back and, and oh, i'm gonna it. cover this girl's ass right now because that's my phone case you're gonna put it right into her ass oh, yeah, yeah, sean's yeah. putting it in her ass <laughs> kidding right. sticking it to her ass uh, yep all and right. now it sticks right on here, and I, it's good for now holding, taking selfies, um, or perfect. stand and stuff. Yep. So, all right, let's just get into the strategies because this guy literally. Do we have anything else to say about the the product? I mean, they are reaching about one hundred and sixty nine million dollars in revenue. Uh, well, no, that well, they're I, I, just this year, just in one year. Okay, just in one year. Probably overall now it's over a billion dollars, and it's a simple product, but a lot of good things that this company does, and that we can all learn from. Yep, let's go diving number one. And as, as we said, solve a fucking problem. This pop socket solves basically three character, uh, three main problems is people that love tel taking selfies. If you're just using your phone, some of us with butterfingers or whatever, like it might fall. I mean, it's not us. I mean, we could hold it like yeah. this, but it just makes it much easier to do a selfie. You could, if you're like on the plane, you want to watch, uh, you know, Netflix, or you want to stream something, you could use it as a stand. And also it's good for wrapping around your headphones yeah. so especially as phone phones get bigger especially for women have smaller hands and actually it's hard even for me like it's hard to like rip my phone and then reach the screen so this was the solution i, I love when you're, when you're thinking about products when you're thinking a solution for yourself always think of the mass market too and that's what he did he thought about a solution for him it worked for him he's like you know what let's bring this idea to public and he did nice i'm actually going to move my last point up to number one because it kind of coincides here so number two during periods of innovation, especially rapid innovation, this is the best time to invent new products. So this is cell phones were really starting to get bigger at the time. A lot more people around the world, especially in the United States, where cell phones were really starting to catch on, especially moving into younger generations, kids in high school and middle school. So when there's a new product that comes out, that gives you a great opportunity, anyone out there, to create a product or accessory that can be used with that. And the reason why, it's not a product that's been out for 20, 30, 40 years where people, some people probably would have created something already. This is a brand new product, our brand new industry. Cell phones are new. So the accessories that go with cell phones are gonna be created when the new product comes out. Think of phone cases, pop sockets, 
anything that relates to a cell phone and the rapid expansion of it, now you can create new products that can go with it. Yep. Think about Uber. I always think about Uber. When Uber first came out, great idea. And then people started creating, like if you get an Uber, like a, a, a tray of like convenience items that people would buy from the Uber driver. That's exactly a new product that would have never been thought of because Uber wasn't around, but now that it's around, you can create a new business. Or think about um, Airbnb. Once it created, what happened? What about, what about like external chargers? Exactly, external, external chargers. chargers. And I mean, you can name any, you can literally name anything, but when you're thinking about creating your products, you're like, oh, you, people say to me, Matt, all the time, I, how I'm never going to invent a product. Someone would have thought about it, thought about it already and created one. I say, well, if that product was never around or the accessory was not there to create, like you have the opportunity just as much as anyone else. So, yeah, it's almost like, look at the product, an existing product. How can you make it better? If it's, if it's something that you need. Yeah. Another example is like, you know, monitor, I, I actually, there, there's the product exists is like when you're traveling, you want two monitors. There's these sliding monitors that you mm -hmm. can connect to and you also just basically back to the laptop. Yep. yep. So that's another, another good addition. Uh, number three, number three, number three, leverage TikTok influencers, but with a Q and a strategy. So the way that pop sockets does this, especially this is actually a new thing they're doing is, uh, they're doing this Q and a strategy. It's called mirror mirror where they're taking influencers and there's like a 48 second or like a minute long series where they're just asking silly questions. They're answering silly questions to the audience and they're holding their, their pop socket. Right. So it's a very organic thing. You're seeing the product, but they're answering cool stuff that people are interested in. It's like one of them, one of the, I remember the uh, influencers who has like uh, over 10 million followers saying, who would you want to collab with? And she said she, who she wanted to collab with. I don't remember. Or what's your favorite color and so forth. So it's fun. Again, this is a fun product. It's cool. TikTok is, I mean, it's actually now a, it's, a, it's both a young audience and an older audience, but you know, people want to hear those interesting stories. Who else does this? Warby Parker. Who else does this? Jim, I believe Jim Shark. It's mm -hmm. telling stories of other people and trying to find a way to doing that strategically. Yep. That's a good point. Engage with your audience helps you get new audiences and customer bases as well. Number four, do not try to perfect your product when you launch. And this is, I've seen this so many times before. I probably mentioned it before, but with Dave Barnett, he even said this, guys, your product is going to go through many iterations and your customers are going to give you feedback of how to make your product better, wh whether you try to think of everything or not. So do not try to procrastinate and make your product perfect and, and basically just wait and wait and wait to go out into the market create a prototype, a baseline, and get comments from people. David Barnett did this with PopSockets when he was at the exhibition. When he first released it, he showed the product to basically the exhibition, giving them out for free. People are giving comments. And, and one thing that he saw is like even different audiences markets, which he didn't think about, were interested in the product. And here's a bonus tip. In the beginning, I've seen it personally, do not try to place a huge order so that your price per unit is very cheap as well. So say instead of uh, David Barnett ordering 10,000 units, he ordered a million units. He ordered a million units because instead of paying five cents, he was paying two cents per unit. Then it gets to it, sends them out and launches a product and then it's like, oh shit fucking this isn't working. I have yeah, no proof might, of concept. You like, might be saving money on the short run. You may think that, but if you don't have the proof there, yep. you, you need the proof. It. Definitely need the test. So start with small test runs, show a proof of what it is called is proof of concept so that you can then run a longer, a longer, a bigger order size and whatnot. So proof of concept, don't try to be a perfectionist, just get your uh, product out there and let the market tell you how to make it better and what changes you should make. So many people want to be perfectionist I know, and it I holds it. them back from actually launching their idea. Yep. You know, how many people say I have an idea and they just don't implement it because they, they just want to be a perfectionist. Yeah. So number five is stop being selfish and personalize provide personalization features, customization. This is actually the huge, the biggest thing for pop sockets and why people loved it is they allow their customers or our businesses yep. personalize the whole product. You could have uh, a marble, uh, I believe a holder. I've I believe, um, Cole I've seen that same. on collegiate sports teams and colleges. Now Alabama football, they did one day. I think they partnered with four collegiate, uh, athletes. You could put your brand logo on it. Yeah. So they, that's actually one of the biggest sales they had or initially was, um, when he went to a trade show, right? And then brands, he was giving out the product for free, but the, the, the brands were like, hey, we could put our own logo here, yeah. right? So he had customers right off the bat 
So that's really cool. So, and the, I think the first order was T-Mobile. That's what really, really got their uh, growth started. Guys, Swell does this. The water uh, bottle company yeah. away. I believe Pura Vita bracelets yeah. does this. I think every brand, almost a, well, let's say what eighty percent of the brands that we yeah. discuss have some sort of personalization, customization features. Try to figure out a way how you can implement them for in with your product. Maybe just even like initials, something cool, depending on the product itself. Yep, exactly. And number six, expand your audience, which kind of aligns to what Sean said. So when David was at the exhibition in the beginning, uh, basically big people from big brands would come up and they would be like, wow, we know this product can be great for promotional opportunities. And basically what happened is they said, We'll put a place in order for 10,000, 20,000. And this is something he never expected. He wanted to go after the consumer brand for individuals. And now these brands were saying, wow, this will be on someone's phone. They use it three to four hours a day. And now people are gonna see our brand every day. And then when people are walking around, they see this, they're gonna ask, this is the pop socket question. What's that on the back of your phone? And then it just goes from there. So. Do not assume your audience. And if you have a product, if you can create a problem that your product sells for a new audience, then you can take the opportunity and create a new market. So always be looking to expand your audience. Word of mouth marketing is powerful, especially yeah. in today's world where the CPA is so high yeah. with even Facebook. Not a, if you not can a, even market on TikTok. Facebook now. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's ex very expensive. Word of mouth, that's guerrilla marketing yep. for you. So do that. Look for different ways of getting customers at a cheaper cost. I believe that's it. Yep. Right? As David Barnett says, let your product sell itself. Exactly. Uh, guys, I hope you like this episode. The, hopefully this was super helpful. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe for more weekly. Well, we try to do weekly videos on where we dive into these businesses. If you're listening to this on Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, please leave us a review. Give us a five-star rating if this was helpful. We'll actually leave it a link uh, in the, the YouTube description, but it's going to be like leaveusareview.com. But again, just leave us a review. Something. Something. It helps us. All right, guys. As long as we're helping you. See you Ciao. soon. Bye. Have a good night.